Through investigating the genome sequence, I found it significant that the S protein of the Wuhan coronavirus was critical in its cross-species ability to infect humans. While I was searching for related studies online, one Chinese virologist in particular caught my attention. She spent many years researching bats and coronaviruses. She was the first to locate the key to how coronaviruses can overcome cross-species barriers in order to directly infect human bodies. And she was the first to discover that the SARS virus was the result of a restructuring of multiple SARS-like coronaviruses found in bats. Her name is Shi Zheng Li, and she may be an important link to the origin of the virus. Wikipedia describes Shi Zheng Li as a, quote, Chinese virologist and researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is part of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Further investigations show that Shi Zheng Li has been a figure of controversy since the Wuhan virus outbreak. This is due to a paper she published in 2015 discussing her own research into synthetic viruses. Chai Xin a media company with ties to the Chinese Communist Party interviewed Xi Zhengli in an attempt to refute these rumors. Dr. Zhengli Shi is one of the top experts in China uh, studying about coronavirus uh, in Wuhan Institute of Virology. She has so many publications from uh, collecting, identify bad coronavirus from bad caves. Her lab has these capacities and very sophisticated capacity to generate mutations to make it best fit in human expression as well. Delving further into related information, I discovered that Shi Zheng Li published not one, but four papers in total, each of which contains important information. Since the SARS outbreak in 2003, Shi Zheng Li has been conducting research on coronaviruses. From 2010 onward, the focus of she and her team was redirected to identifying the capacity for coronavirus transmission across species, specifically putting the spotlight on the S protein of the coronaviruses. In other words, her team's research in the Wuhan lab has been looking into the part that can make coronaviruses transmittable to humans. In June 2010, a team, including Shi Zheng Li, published a paper. It describes research to understand the susceptibility of angiotensin converting enzyme 2 ACE2 proteins of different bat species to the S protein of the SARS virus. In the experiments, they also modified key amino acid condoms to mutate the bat's ACE2 to examine compatibility with the SARS-S protein. This paper demonstrated their awareness of the special relationship between the S protein and the ACE2 receptor. It also signified that she had unearthed the passageway for coronaviruses into human bodies. In October 2013, she and her team published a paper in the authoritative science journal Nature. They claimed a breakthrough in coronavirus research. What was their breakthrough? They successfully isolated three viruses from bats, one of which had an S protein that integrated with human ACE2 receptors. This effectively demonstrated the human infection of SARS-like viruses to humans without the need of an intermediary host. Then, in November 2015, she and her team at the Wuhan lab once again published a paper, this time in the British journal Nature Medicine. They discussed the creation of a synthetic virus, a self-replicating chimeric virus. This virus had the SARS virus as the framework, with the key S protein replaced by the one they had found in a bat coronavirus she mentioned in her 2013 paper. This new virus demonstrated a powerful ability for cross-species infection. The mice infected with this synthetic virus revealed severe lung damage with no cure. This symbolized that Xi's successful splicing of the SARS virus was a key to open the door to the cross-species transmission. What is startling is that the successful experiments on mice were only the tip of the iceberg. They planned to further experiment on primates. Although Xi Zhengli did not indicate any conclusion from this research, 
Her move to research on primates suggests this was to more closely simulate the infection of humans with this new synthetic virus. This wasn't done without controversy, however. Xi's experiments quickly triggered widespread debates from the academic community. Simon Wayne Hobson of the Pasteur Institute in France expressed deep concerns. He told Nature, if the new virus escaped, nobody could predict the trajectory. Propagation could happen anyway. His statement is exactly what's happening, that the virus is everywhere and it could not spread that fast through various countries unless it's been spread via laboratories, via the mail, via research scientists studying that. Additional studies very strongly support the idea that this new coronavirus came from a recombination event, that is a cutting and pasting of two different viruses. So her work proves or strongly supports the hypothesis that it could not possibly have been generated in a natural zoonotic transmission, but had to come from a hospital setting, the laboratory setting almost certainly, the biosafety level for Wuhan research facility. However, this did not terminate Xi's research. On November 14, 2018, Xi Jingli spoke at the School of Life Sciences and Biotechnology at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. The topic was bat coronavirus and its cross-species infection. Reports of this event have since been deleted from the university website. I discovered two more significant pieces of information regarding the dangers of the research conducted by Xi Zhengli's team. First, on October 16, 2014, the Obama administration, wary of the potential threats to public health from the gain of function GOF research into SARS, MERS, or influenza, announced through the National Institute of Health that it was suspending funding into similar research. The funding pause included Xi Zhengli's research project, Genetic Engineering of SARS-like coronavirus in bats, a collaborative effort with Dr. Ralph Barrick, a virologist at the University of North Carolina. Second, after the Wuhan outbreak, Indian researchers compared the S protein sequence between 2019 NCOV and SARS. They discovered that 2019 NCOV had four new sequences inserted, all of which can be found in HIV sequences through a search on GenBank. Xi Zhengli discredited those observations, although she never denied the existence of the four inserted sequences. However, scientists probing GenBank found that there were only three viruses containing all sequences. The first is the HIV virus itself. The second is a bat coronavirus discovered by Xi. And the third is this new Wuhan coronavirus. We've done this kind of work for now 40 years for me. There's the sequence analysis and, and comparison of the virus of the SARS-2 COVID-19. Apparently has genes that come from other human and other species, including some envelope, the GP41 from HIV. What is the HIV's GP41? The answer I found online describes GP41 as a protein of HIV that acts as the key to infecting human bodies, resulting in the functional failure of the immune system. If the discovery by Judy and her colleagues are established, it would mean the infectious part of the Wuhan virus, the S protein, incorporated the sequence of the HIV key protein. This made me think of the immunodeficiency symptoms in people infected. They were doing research on a human transmittable coronavirus that was actually published in a paper. So this is research that they actually published. They were working on developing a coronavirus for the human host, which you know leads you to question, why would you be creating a coronavirus that can infect humans? What would be the purpose of that research? Is it, is it for a weapon? Is it so that you can then create a vaccine that you are the sole recipient of the profits from. The Chinese have full access to our databases. They have full access to all that research that comes out. They have full access to all our universities to train their 
scientists, and they have full access to our scientists, like was you know with the recent indictment of the uh, head of the chemistry department at Harvard. I mean, this is the Thousand Talents program. Tens of thousands of of the most uh, of the world's most brightest people in all of these different um, areas that are going to China to help them with their programs. And all of these programs, as you know, have a dual use capability. Beijing's attacks on the United States, which have occurred for weeks and weeks, are really worrying. What it shows is that China is desperate and the United States needs to defend itself because China is propagating this narrative that we spread the coronavirus to China. So the United States needs to just come out with the facts about how China took coronavirus samples from Canada and the United States. They sent them to Wuhan. We don't know exactly what went on in that lab there at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but it's time for the United States to defend itself.